Hello, everybody. Thanks, Keith, uh, for that. Um, hello, everyone. It's, it's nice to see so many of you there online. Of course, it's always nicer to see everybody uh, in person, but I think nowadays we are already, already getting used to of this virtual kind of, of working. I hope all of you and your families are, are well uh, during this uh, very difficult time we have had during, during this uh, spring. And, uh, and this is indeed the topic of, of our, of our um, first session, session more or less here in, in this uh, webinar. Uh, like Keith already said, feel free to ask questions, raise your hand or, or keep comments in the chat, chat box. Uh, the, my perspective today is not so much about self-directed support, it's more general about the COVID-19 and its effects on services for people with disabilities. I have, I, I tried to make it from European perspective, uh, so here I'm more or less uh, maybe representing ESPD, the European Association for Service Providers. I'm a vice president of, of that organization, you, both of you are aware of and also members of. of. We, uh, it, it's good timing of, of this webinar we have today because we just had our uh, ESPD just had its uh, yearly spring event. Unfortunately, we were, we were supposed to be in Paris to have uh, three days there. You all know we were not. <laughs> we, we, we were having virtual meetings instead. Um, so we were just saying that the long days of meetings were there, but, but not, not, not the fun, fun part of the, of the conference. So, so it was, uh, but it was good that uh, we, we, I think I now have some quite up-to-date information about, um, about the situation and let's say more from the Brussels perspective about the, about the, about the COVID-19 and the effects because we have, been, we have been discussing about it during, during the last days quite a bit. And, but of course, if some of you uh, would like to add something, and then I know you have a, a lot of information about these topics also, feel free to do so because I have mainly tried to gather, gather some some views on, on the current, current situation, and also then a little bit make a bridge to, the, to, to Simon's presentation, which will be more, of course, uh, about self-directed support. Also, I have to say, uh, I'm sorry if, if there will be some, some noise or some, uh, some background noise or some disruption. I have my kids at home. I'm sure most of you are aware of it, <laughs> and fa are facing the similar situation. So, if my five-year-old is, is popping in, try, try to bear, <laughs> bear that. So we can move on. So more, I, I try to make it more on, on the point of view of, of the services, but of course we have to say uh, that the situation in, in Europe, it's very, very different in, in country to country. Uh, we, we all know uh, from the news that in, uh, with, the, with the virus itself, the situation is it's, it's very different. Uh, some of the countries are, are affected really, it has hit the really, really hard, like, like Spain, Italy, France, UK, also some others. And, and then um, some others have, have, have been maybe more, in, more early, they have had more time to react. Like in Finland, I have to say, we have been quite, uh, we were so early with the, with the restrictions because of course, we are so far, it didn't gain here first, so we, we had time to react, so we haven't been hit so hard from the virus itself. And of course, also because of that, there is a, there is a, a different degree of restrictions also. And the same goes for the services of people with disabilities. Also very different uh, situations across Europe, but, but all together, I, uh, we share the situation that there is a lot of consequences of the situation for the lives of, of people with uh, disabilities. Uh, all of us, all of, all of the citizens, of, citizens have faced a lot of restri restrictions to our, let's say, human rights, basic human rights, rights to choose, right, right to move, a lot of things we have taken for granted, more or less. Uh, they have been restricted quite a lot, and, and the same goes for people with disabilities. And as always in times of, of different kind of crisis, it hits really the hardest for those most vulnerable ones. So people with disabilities have faced a lot of 
a lot of difficult issues during this during this pandemic and uh, it goes for people uh, who are living in, let's say in living in in different kind of supported by social services living in group homes and so on uh, of course for, for many people it's very difficult for, for many families uh, they are it's very hard hard for them uh, a lot of support systems for families have been cut and they have to have to survive on on their own uh, also together with the restrictions in movement and so on very difficult for, for many people and families people with autism spectrum and, and for many for many others a lot of uh, very essential therapies and so on have been cut as well as almost through Europe for example the daytime activities employment services have been cut have been cut uh, really really so that people have been really um, not to know what to do during during these months and it has of course a lot of a lot of consequences for people and we have to bear in mind that of course with people with disabilities especially people with intellectual disabilities there is also very big social psychological difficulties when it's difficult to explain what it's all about uh, who there is nobody to blame about it uh, and and things like this and uh, but many organizations have prepared very good easy to read materials about the COVID-19 for example like uh, Pena inclusion inclusion is well presented in our webinar you have done excellent material for example and, and many others uh, and it's really very much needed a uh, human rights commissioner uh, made an made an statement people with disabilities must not be left behind in this crisis uh, with, uh, with the link you can you can read it if, if you haven't seen it so far I, and i think it, it's fundamentally important you can go to the next slide thanks so uh, some of the some of the so together with all this as as like like said uh, the 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 lives of people with disabilities have been really uh, really restricted and their rights have been limited in in a very many ways and and this goes and this hits of course them also because the services have been affected so badly so badly in, in many many basically all of the countries so therefore ESPD which is a, a, like said European Association for Service Providers uh, has been very active during during this pandemic, and 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 there is few actions. And maybe if some of you is not following them already, maybe it, it could be useful, or or you might find some in, interesting information from these. SPD is organizing week, weekly webinars on on Wednesday on Wednesdays addressing all topics of issues of service provision for people with disabilities for example last week the topic was ethics and the situations in which in, in some of the countries people with disabilities has been left left out from intensive care and ethical issues related to that uh, and 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 then last week week before that the digitalization of services and and so on and next week the topic will be uh, more or less the exit strategies how to come out from this crisis and and so on there is the facebook group i think it's very active and, and there is really a huge amount of very good material material from from all across europe very important is to, to contact with eu policy makers uh, and ESPD aims to add, address uh, three roles of european union union coordination legislation and funding ESPD has identified number of priorities for EU, which it should consider in response to the situation regarding the threat of social service provision and the dialogue between ESPD and the EU institutions is ongoing. We can move on. Uh, uh, and very important is the awareness raising. Uh, in e ESPD's webpage, you can find very good page on COVID-19, collection of data from grassroots organization and a big research on the impact of COVID-19 in the sector will be launched in the coming weeks addressing issues for staffing organizations and service delivery. So I'm looking forward to that. This is not an action of, of ESPD, but I think this is very a very good source of in, information. This webpage I have put here 
the LTC COVID org, uh, and this is uh, gathering information regarding the long-term care and COVID-19. Uh, I think we have all faced in our uh, societies the fact that in different kind of long-term care homes, there has been a lot of uh, deaths and a lot of, uh, lot of people, of course, it goes especially for elderly care, but also I think in disability, disability sector. And in this um, page, there is a lot of information and a lot of uh, this, and if there is country reports and conclusions and, and made of these and so on. So if you, if you have interest on, on that, you can find a lot, a lot of information from that web page. You can go on. Uh, sorry. Okay, maybe it's, it was. Uh, so, if if you have a question, you can raise your hand, or I can try to look at the web, uh, the chat box also. But if there is something in the chat, maybe Peter or Heidi, you can you can. Uh, say so, say that because I'm not sure I, I notice it at the same time when I when I speak. Yes, so, we will we will thanks. check the the box. Yes, thanks. Okay, some 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 um, some uh, fundamental topics about the situation on service provision at the moment. Uh, so the the starting point that with the growing spread of the coronavirus, many services have been put on hold leading to the severe funding and staffing difficulties. It's, uh, it's only a matter of time before the challenges met by social service providers will become irreversible for many. So I think uh, all of us have faced, like I said already in our countries, that many of very fundamental, very important social services have been cut, up, cut in, in this situation. And of course, this is a tragic, tragic for the people who use these services, but also it makes it very difficult, in especially in many, in many countries, it makes it very difficult for uh, providers to, to be able to cope with the situation, especially when it, when it, uh, when it takes a long time and so on. And it, it creates a lot of difficulties, of course. Uh, also, uh, uh, one, one, of the, one of the point of view is, uh, is staffing. Uh, because uh, the sector is already suffering from shortages of staff and the supply of service provision will be reduced to the point of many services will simply not be able to run. Uh, it's, it, it, from the many angles, the staffing problem is very accurate. Uh, in many services, like I said, there is shortages already. Then when there is uh, the, the situation that many of the staff members are, are, sick, are sick, for example, or or uh, there is cuts in services and we have to uh, we can't pay the salaries anymore and so on uh, so it's it's very difficult to have enough uh, have sufficient amount of staff in the, in the services in the current current situations and also uh, I, the, this quote, quote is is from one of them it's one of the uh, press releases of the SPD that many social providers are running their services without any funding guarantees from public authorities, because human lives are at stake. But this is not sustainable on the long run. Wages need to be paid and equipment needs to be bought. Politicians, politicians, politicians and public authorities must, must back up their promises with action and guarantee funding for social services. And this is a really a problem in most of the countries that the, uh, with the cuts, and there has been a lot of these cuts, and then in, in many ways, uh, providers have been very innovative and made new kind of services also to support people who don't have data and activities or they have lost their therapies or so but there is no uh, payments let's say from from those services and of course it's it's not sustainable that's a sustainable situation and also it creates a great risk for the future so uh, how to make sure that the fund, funding level will be returned to the same after after the crisis we can move on. Uh, th these are the challenges uh, uh, from the perspective of, of process, let's say. So, the, like like said, uh, and and these are quite across the Europe. The staffing challenges, like said, uh, closure, freezing of formal care services, 
and, and things like that. And of course, ensuring safe working conditions and labor conditions are met. That's, that's also a question. Uh, this has also been a question in, in most of the countries in Europe, shortages of protective equipment and medicine in care services. Many care workers lacking key protective equipment or having to buy their own equipment, masks, gloves, etc., which is leading to unsafe working practices. And of course, also it creates threat for the people using the services also. Uh, lack of guidance to service providers on how to deal with emergency crisis, uh, difficulties in coordination of expertise and responsible of specific challenges in social care and support. I think, uh, at least I have to say that in, in, in Finland, uh, I think the, the restrictions and the, and the way government has uh, lead, led the situation has been largely, largely welcomed and, and said it has been seen as a very in a good way, the cri how the crisis has been held, but there is really uh, also here weakness in this guidance and so on. So, for example, now when the when the restrictions have are been lifted away, uh, it's like it's done in a way that it just said that this this will happen, and and then the, all the practical kind of how to do it is is left to everybody to consider, and so it would need a, a little bit more coordination, coordination between national authorities, regional, local authorities, and then the providers, providers of care and support. Of course, particular challenges in the countries, areas with weaker social protection systems, importance of facilitating access to health and information for persons with disabilities and elderly people. Like already said, uh, there is a lot of practices across Europe uh, where um, people with the, who live, for example, in long-term care homes. And it doesn't have to be care home. It can be, uh, for people with disabilities, a, a group home with, with young, young people living there who have rented a flat from that kind of, um, of, that kind of, kind of entity, let's say. Uh, and they are all dealt, for example, with the same way uh, from the authorities. For example, uh, it's an example from Finland. Uh, there is, uh, like mo in most countries in Europe, there is the, uh, this restrictions that in, the, in these group homes or social care units, you can't visit, they, can't, they don't take visitors there. So, for example, family members can't, can't visit people, a person with disability who has rented a home from, from a group home. And it's, it's of course, very, uh, um, I don't know how to put it you know in a well well but it's a, it can be controversial that uh, really a person with 85 with multiple diseases it put totally in the same category that the person with disability of 25 who doesn't uh, be a person with disability is um, is not a risk group let's say just because he or she has a disability so and now they are putting in the same like group uh, along based on the the living arrangement. So this is this is problematic in, uh, from the perspective of, of human rights, I would say, uh, and also the like the access to her, to health. There is a lot of uh, um, issues that the, 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 the health topics that the, the virus is taking care of in in the social care units. Let's say, even if there might not be the the knowledge or 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 equipment to do, to do so. So it, it, it creates challenges all across Europe. We can move on. Uh, then uh, there are the proposed actions for the European Union. Uh, the flexibility in, in stability and growth uh, and state aid used to cover costs linked to our wages and running costs of social care and su support uh, provision. Uh, corona response uh, investment initiatives should include targeting of measures dedicated to institute a conscious and safe provision of social, of social care and support provision across Europe, in particular regarding protective equipment, medicine and social care and support, and ensuring access to health for persons with disabilities and older persons. And this is in the next uh, slide, I have one quarter of this, but this is really a big topic at the moment. Uh, that 
of course also with the, with the next uh, next uh, point access to EU funds should be facilitated and less burdensome, including especially unused EU funds today. But at the moment there is no, let's say, EU funds to the there is a big package from EU to support to support the situation, the the organizations and, and societies in the situation, but there is nothing for the sector, for the social social care sector. It leave, leaves it very much out, out. So this is a big, big point for, for lobbying. Creation of knowledge center providing specific expertise, exchange of know-how and professionals. So we can move on. Uh, creation of exchange platform for models of good practice regarding how to support persons with specific support needs and elderly, how to support professionals, how to ensure continuity of the service, how to facilitate exchange of management and coordination procedures, how to ensure accessibility to health services and information for all. And um, um, I think there is a, a lot of need for, for this kind of uh, exchange uh, in organizations. In these webinars, ESPD has have hundreds of participants, and like this this week, in the, the events in in Paris, Paris, more than 600 people were following following it. Uh, so people do have a, a I think big need to exchange and and to learn from each other. So this kind of exchange is is very very important. And of course, uh, conscious engagement with European organizations representing social service providers and other organizations. So this is it. And, and this good I have here, it's, it's regarding the, the investment initiative and there is no, uh, and the fact that there is at the moment uh, nothing for the social, social sector there. We can move on. I think I have used my time also already. Um, and a few words about the ways forward. What does it mean? Uh, like I already said, uh, there, there should be funding for the sector to help the recovery. So lobbying is, is needed. These major cuts, how to ensure that this money is coming back to the sector and, and so on. Um, and for example, now when, when all these very good innovative services have been created, uh, which has been very good that the sector has been so flexible supporting the families, I, I think, in a great deal and persons with disabilities in this in the situation but we have to make sure that this is not taken for granted for from now for forever uh, not all people even if they have used now for example digital services because there is nothing else it's not inevitable that all of them want to use them uh, after the crisis is over for example so it doesn't create the situation that uh, um, that now when there is this digital service for the therapy or for the daytime activity that and the person has used it that he or she doesn't want to use the actual service anymore so we have to make sure that uh, these very good initiatives which has been helping people and i'm sure there is also a lot of initiatives which can be useful in the future also so that it's not everything what's offered in the future i think that's very important point uh, to work together with people with disabilities, the families and the providers to make it make make it sure because after the after the crisis it will be so many so much economic difficulties in all the societies that there will be I'm sure a lot of uh, lot of uh, temptation to cut cut the social services. So I think this will be the major major topic for coming coming years also, and. Um, Indeed, uh, yesterday we were discussing a lot about this, that there is no guidance what happens when restrictions are lifted. Uh, so there is very diff lots of different kind of situations in different countries, in different services, and there should be some guidance how to, how to lift the service, how to, how to act and, and what kind of things to take in, 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 into account. Then the next slide, I think it's fundamental which comes to the subject of, of today and relevant for self-directed su support. I think, uh, uh, and it's of course clear that this crisis has um, kind of may, has, has been a rise of, let's say, protective scheme again. And for people with the, uh, disabilities, uh, it's, it has been the history, of, it's part of the history in a very strong way, the very strong protective schemes and the institutionalization and, and so on 
So I think it's fundamental that we think that how to make sure that it's not used this situation uh, to go on with this uh, protective scheme and to go back to the institutionalization to make people safe to be so that to be safe there to lock people in their homes because it's safe and so on and and how to ensure that human rights and people's rights to choose and make decisions is also uh, it's moving forward and we are still on that path even if now there is a way back let's say there is a wave back at the moment and and i think this is really a fundamental question of of today and for the coming coming months and years because uh, of, of course it's clear that now these measures are made to protect people to protect all the citizens also people with disabilities but also uh, it's much easier for us uh, for us uh, who are living and acting in a full citizenship in the society to take back our rights and to when the restrictions are lifted and, and start go back to the, let's say more or less normal way of living but with those the most vulnerable ones how can we make sure that it's ensured also that they are not left behind in that situation and we don't continue to protect them and to, to keep them safe in behind let's say locked doors and i think that's uh, that comes I can move on. We can move to Simon's presentation now. Maybe Simon has some answers to, to this question, and, and you are touching this topic maybe also. So that was all from my side. Thank you.